I am a full-time dog trainer. I also rescue highly reactive dogs. Four months ago I took in a three-year-old Rottweiler mix. She came from a puppy mill and was found locked in a cage in the backyard, severely underweight and very skittish. She wasn't good around people and couldn't go for walks. After a month she was back up to a healthy weight and I was able to get her to trust me. For the past month I've started taking her out for walks. Mostly late night where there was no dogs or other people, but this week we were working up to walking in less populated areas earlier in the evening. I had a white dog vest on the dog with do not pet in big black letters on the vest. I also wear a body cam in public to protect myself from liability which brings me to my situation. I was walking behind my one acre property where there is a lake and a path around. A woman and her young daughter who is approximately seven were walking toward me. She wanted to pet my dog and I had to firmly say that she can't pet the dog, she is training. The mother told me it'd only take a second. Again I said no and to please keep your distance because the dog is in training. So I walk off path, which already is making the dog which has anxiety a bit uneasy. So I continue on the path, but this little girl is crying, wanting to pet the dog. So the mother and girl are following me at this point. So to avoid a situation where someone could get hurt, I turn the dog so she is on the other side of me, facing the property fences, I hope this makes sense, and go back toward my property and we go in the backyard. So everything is fine, and I'm playing with the dog in the backyard. When this little girl comes up to my fence with a piece of meat and is trying to feed the dog. The dog is running toward the fence I screamed for her to back away from the fence. She just stood there and the dog grabbed onto the meat. The girl startled. The dog startled and grabbed onto her hand. I pried the dog away, sustaining a dog bite of my own. The police were called, animal control called. I filled out all paperwork and I put the dog down, which greatly saddens me. The little girl needed two stitches and her medical bills were just a little over 900. I offered to settle for half the balance because I felt I had given multiple warnings to the girl and her mother, all on video, for the little girl to stay away from the dog, to not pet the dog, and finally not to feed the dog. Now the mother is saying she is going to sue for her medical bills, pain and suffering, and lost wages, among other things. Now I'm refusing to pay anything and saying I'll see you am I the idiot. Not the idiot, they were warned multiple times and then came onto your property. Their sense of entitlement is revolting. Now that poor dog is destroyed. If anything I should think you could counter sue for emotional distress. You've got the footage showing that they were warned, you purposely maneuvered the dog away from them, then they encroached on your space. I could say a few more things, but I don't want to get banned. This kind of thing sets me off in a bad way. I'm sorry for your loss of that dog. Not the idiot, screw that lady who does not any self-control and clearly isn't going to teach her daughter. She's gonna twist and teach the daughter that you and your dog are the villain. You gave more than enough warning and kept explaining that no one should touch your dog. You even went on your private property, so how about counter suing for trespassing? I know you're not going to win, legally. With those stupid laws of people breaking into your home then cutting themselves on the glass from the window they broke to enter your house illegally. But morally, know that you are in the right and you should have zero guilt, no matter what those stupid courts may say. Not the idiot. I don't understand some people. This was caused by her own stupidity and entitlement. Throwing a tantrum at seven years old because you feel entitled to someone else's pet. This world is going to crap. I'm sorry for the dog, it lost its life because of a moron of a woman and her offspring. You gave her plenty of warnings, you were in your yard, the little girl came to feed the dog obviously helped by her mother. I'm not sure if it would be possible, but given you have recordings I would sue her. Maybe next time she'll think twice before acting like an idiot. My 22 older sister, 27, Gemma is disabled, she has severe scoliosis to the point where she can only walk very short distances using a walker and can't really carry anything. Our entire family that lives nearby, me, my dad, our neighbor who is also but slightly less severely disabled, and my younger sister, help her out to any extent, with my dad paying her bills and rent, and me doing lots of physical things for her, and helping look after her six animals. However, Gemma has been treating me horribly since I moved into our village to be near family. 
I'm a working musician and street performer, and she constantly dismisses my work and stops me from practicing in my house. We live next to each other, not the same house, and otherwise insults my work and career, calling me lazy and saying I'm a leech. I pay £500 per month in rent and bills to live here and am completely self-sufficient, but me and my dad often buy each other things or lend each other money for convenience. It's gotten to the point where she's blocked my phone number and all social media to prove that I'm worthless, and she says it doesn't matter, because I don't need you for anything anyway. So my response now is to just not help her. Carrying shopping for her, helping look after her animals, everything I have been doing I'm now not because I refuse to let her treat me this way. My younger sister agrees with me, but my dad says I need to just buckle down and be the bigger person. I have scoliosis and while carrying groceries is not easy, I can do it to a degree if I make the bags even in weight. I can't work because of nerve damage, and the spinal fusion I have is most of my spine. She needs to stop treating you and your sister like crap. Damn that girl should be thankful for all the help she gets. How bad is her spine? Does she have any medication to help with her quality of life? My combined curve 94 degrees in total, before surgery. I found things to do, I found an outlet for my energy. She needs to grow the hell up. Not the idiot. Look, this is horrible. There's no skirting around it, this is horrible. I'm sorry she treated you this way. I agree you shouldn't help until she apologizes. You're helping her, she doesn't deserve to dismiss and demean you. I'm sure it makes her feel better, for most people down on themselves putting someone else down is a tiny endorphin hit. It's horrible that someone else will have to pick up the slack, but I think you all should have a fair open conversation to say, well you are happy to continue helping, you'll only do so if you're treated with the same care and respect you show your sister. Seems like your whole family has indulged your sister for way too long. Your dad is wrong and in the long run, not doing her any favors. The longer this goes on, with your dad picking up the slack I suppose, the less you will probably be willing to accept any kind of apology and go back to the status quo. I have to say, I question the wisdom of having six animals that you rely on others to take care of, maybe one, but six. Seems like your sister has rarely had to deal with the consequences of bad behavior. My son and his wife are 25 and 27, and I'm 45. They both worked full-time until a few months ago when his wife had to stop for reasons that aren't mine to share. And my son has become insufferable. It recently culminated in me telling him he needed to stop whining about the situation and man up. I love my son very much. But he's always online posting about how hard he has to work. Or going on unprovoked monologues about the stresses of being a family's sole breadwinner. He does this openly, doesn't even try to hide it from his wife. It clearly makes her feel bad or like she's not pulling her weight. Since he also talks about having to do everything around the house and care for his wife since she's on IR for now. I talked to her and she told me she wasn't bothered by anything but him claiming he does everything at home. Because according to her he doesn't. When I pointed everything out to him he said, well you and her can't understand what it's like to be the sole income of a household. And that I should ask dad since he could tell you. His father was the sole breadwinner for a long time. I work too now though. But yes, he knows what it's like. But he, his father, or my father were never this dramatic. I never once heard my husband or dad express any worry over bearing the entire burden. These were men. They didn't do that. They manned up and kept it moving. Sure, they may have felt a little uneasy about it. But they didn't dwell on it. And they certainly didn't belittle their wife's contributions and lie about doing everything at home as well. My daughter pointed out he is my son, and I shouldn't be standing up for his wife if it means putting him down. But I'm just tired of him moaning and groaning in person and online about his situation. Along with basically saying his wife is not pulling her weight. Everyone's the idiot here. You for the man up, these were men, nonsense. Being responsible for your family isn't a one gender thing. Many of the men in the past didn't complain on social media instead they internalized their frustration and emotions, not healthy, drank it out in a bar, smoked entire packs instead day, etc, not all of them, but let's not act like the past was perfect. He, your son, should also shut up and do what needs to be done to provide for his family. He also shouldn't be putting his wife down publicly, especially when it seems like she can't help it or at all.
Everyone else has already pointed this out, but man up isn't what your son needs to do. He needs to show his wife respect both privately and publicly, and to not use social media as an attention sponge to validate his breadwinner stresses. I'm a woman, and I've been the sole breadwinner, and there are non-binary people who are the sole household earner. It's not about gender identity, it's about making your family work the best way you can in the face of circumstances you can't totally control, and not making the partner who can't work feel like crap about it. Not the idiot, and bravo for standing up for the daughter-in-law. It seems mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws don't always have great relationships, but it sounds like you have a good one. My husband and I both work and have since before we were even married, but my dad was the sole breadwinner when I was growing up. My mom was a stay-at-home mom and he never ever said such things and I doubt he ever even thought them. What I really find offensive is that he shares these things on social media and such. I hate when people post that kind of stuff because it really isn't anyone else's business and to actively try to make your partner look like crap is just nasty. I have a daughter Emma, 7, and she has a best friend Kat, 7. They knew each other since prep school and are inseparable since. However they are not allowed to stay overnight at each other places, as Emma is allergic to strawberries which Kat loves, and Kat is allergic to nuts, while well, Emma loves hazelnut and Nutella specifically. Four months ago Emma received an invitation from Kat to her birthday party, which has been accepted. I have asked Kat's mother before if I need to bring something for Emma, but she assured me everything is fine. When we arrived the entire part was strawberry themed, and all the food, they only served sweet stuff, had strawberries in them. Due to this Emma gave the present she made to Kat, and we left shortly after as I don't want to expose my child to allergies. Kat was told that Emma wasn't feeling well, and we didn't want to risk if it's COVID. Yesterday was Emma's birthday. She wanted a Nutella cake so one was ordered. I have warned Kat's mum that the cake will contain Nutella, but cupcakes and other desserts are not free. She knew about that, and everything went fine until Kat had to be rushed to the hospital due to allergic reaction. Kat's mum forgot that Nutella contains nuts and let Kat to have a slice while me and my husband were not watching. She called me an idiot as she felt I was getting back at her for throwing a strawberry party, and now her child is hurt. She also said it in front of Emma, so she is now feeling guilty and refuses to eat anything. Am I the idiot for ordering a Nutella cake for my daughter's birthday? I would almost say everyone's the idiot here for making a nut cake at all knowing the allergic kid will be there, but you did give the mom warning and offered other food that I assume was prepped elsewhere to prevent cross-contamination, I hope, anyway. So for that reason only, I will say you're not the idiot. However, other kid's mom is the idiot, big time. They were not only horribly negligent about your own kid's allergies but also theirs. Why would she not tell you about the strawberry party? And how could she forget that the cake had her kid's potentially life-threatening allergen after already being told about it? There's no excuse for any of it. At that age kids can ask their parents if they can eat something before they eat it, and the parent can point out what is okay and what is not. I work at a school and parents teach their kids how to ask about food and ingredients. Sounds like the parents need to step it up and start teaching her how to ask and not ingest things if not sure of the ingredients. This is very important if she's going to school or parties with little parent supervision. I reread and see her mom gave it to her. I guess you can make cute signs to put next to food that says contains nuts. Not the idiot. She didn't care about having party themed around the one thing your kid was allergic to and also didn't inform you. You tell her about the cake so she was warned ahead of time. What were you supposed to do, warn her a second or third time? As for her feeling mad she acknowledged that she knew your daughter was allergic to strawberries but proceeded to have foods your daughter couldn't eat. I have two kids. A 7-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. Every other week I take them to activities in a certain mall and in between we go to a local fast food chain in between. Now I do usually have my kids have a healthy diet, but for those rather rare occasions I let them choose whatever they want. I don't believe going to a fast food place, but then restricting their order so they won't enjoy rather unhealthy food makes sense. So the kids menu comes with many different options, and the menu even has pictures of all the food. They go every week so they know. My son chose chicken nuggets and fries as the main, a drink and a cookie for dessert. Just what I would have expected my daughter picked the chicken Caesar salad. 
I did not expect that, asked her if she was sure, explained it did not come with fries, she loves fries. She insisted. Last time I had the salad, and she tried one of the croutons, and a piece of chicken and loved them. I did not care too much, and a Caesar salad is great, it's not like just snacking a few salad leaves like a rabbit. There is sauce, cheese, chicken, fried chicken and croutons as extras. Plus she had the ice cream for dessert. Well the food came, we sat down, and after taking a few bites she started complaining about the food. She saw my son eat his chicken nuggets and dip the fries in sauce. She asked him for one, he let her try the fries, and gave her a nugget as he usually can't finish all anyways. Then she decided that instead of the salad she wanted fries now. I said no, she has to eat the salad. Or well, I would not make her eat it, but I won't buy her fries instead. My argument is that she chews it, she is old enough to make that choice, and there is nothing wrong with the salad, it looks delicious. I even offered to give her some of my meal, a baguette sandwich, but she wants nuggets and fries now. She started throwing a fit. I ignored it, told her to sit and eat or at least stop screaming now, or there would be consequences. Some old lady heard her, and I guess she picked up the it's not fair that he gets nuggies and fries, and she has to eat that stupid salad. Well the lady went off on me. How I am treating my kids unfairly and how I should not body shame my daughter. I told her to get out of my business and shut up, she does not know what she is talking about. Note. My son is extremely slim for his age. He is a very active child and quite tall. He is underweight, but his doctor said it's nothing to worry about as long as he is eating normally, it can be that way for kids his age. My daughter is on the heavier side of average. The doctor is also not much concerned here, her weight is within what is okay, just on the higher end of that. So it might have seemed like it was because my daughter is not as extremely skinny that she did not get the fried food, which is not what happened. Am I the idiot for making my daughter the salad she chose instead of buying her nuggets and fries like her brother? Not the idiot. You did fine. You explained the salad did not come with fries. She wanted to try a new good and she didn't like it. That's okay, lesson learned. Fast food salads aren't exactly cheap and she could have eaten the chicken pieces and croutons. The old lady needs to mind her business. You, general you, don't always have the context behind a situation, so unless the child in immediate danger of being abused, it's best to not comment. Not liking the meal you chose is not abusive or dangerous. She actively chose her food. I'm sure you would have said the same to your son if he regretted his choice. It's a shame that the lady stepped in, but you don't have to explain yourself to a random stranger. Other than explaining the whole situation to the lady and inviting her into the conversation, I don't think there's anything else you could have done in this stressful situation. A baby throwing a tantrum is a baby throwing a tantrum, everyone understands and is less likely to intervene. When a talking child throws a tantrum, it's easier to be more frustrated and stressed, as all passers-by are listening to what your child says and is making judgments in their mind, just as you experienced. Sounds like a normal day of having two kids. You even asked her if she was sure, and she was. If you hadn't allowed her to have what she asked for, she would have thrown a fit about that instead. Good on you for not getting her something else. Also, screw strangers who don't know the whole situation chiming in on your child's tantrum. I may be an idiot, I would have told my child no ice cream unless they eat what they ordered. It would be one thing if you were trying to force feed her a salad while her brother pigged out on fried foods, but even if that's what it looked like, it's not what was happening.